Okay, in lesson 14, we're looking at how to make decimal representations of rational numbers and also how to convert from decimal uh, representations to fractions. So remember that a rational number is a fraction or its equivalent. And so when we are converting rational numbers to fractions and we're looking at decimals, one of the easiest ways to do it is to say the decimal number out loud. So for A, the decimal number has one place after the decimal, which is the tenths place. So when I say this, I would say it as three tenths. So the three would go in the numerator and the 10 would go in the denominator. If we look at B, we have two decimal places after the decimal which is the hundredths place. And so the way we'd read this is 25 hundredths. So we'd put the 25 in the numerator and the hundred in the denominator. We look at the next one, we have three decimal places, which is out to the thousandths. So we'd read this one as 345 thousandths. So 345 in the numerator and thousandths in the denominator. Now, when we look at this next decimal place, we've got to go out even further. This time we have six decimal places after. So we have the tenths, the hundreds, the thousandths, the ten thousandths, the hundred thousandths, and the millionths. So negative two and two millionths. So in our denom sorry, in our numerator, we'd put negative two and everything that is in that decimal number, except the decimal, and then in the denominator, we're gonna put our millionths. So if you're having a tough time figuring out the place values, another way we can look at this is if we look at our first decimal number, we had one digit after the decimal, we have a one in our denominator and one zero. We have two digits after the decimal, a one in the denominator and two zeros. Three digits after the decimal, three zeros after the one in our denominator. Six digits after the decimal, a one and then six zeros in our denominator. So that's another way to think about that. So then we looked at perfect squares and perfect cubes during class. And remember the way to solve that is we need to first find the root of the number. So the root of the square root of 25 would be five because five times five is 25. And then to write five as a fraction, we put it over one. So in F, we find the root of the number. The root of nine is three because three times three is nine but I do see a negative in front of it, so it's really negative three. Change it into a fraction by putting it over one. When I see the square root of four sixteenths, I'm really thinking of it as the square root of four over the square root of 16. So then I think, what is the root of four? Oh, it's two, because two times two is four. What is the root of 16? It's four, because four times four is, is 16. So our fraction is two fourths. So then uh, we talked some about how to convert fractions to decimals. So I know whenever I see a fraction, it is a division problem. So 5 eighths is really 5 divided by 8. So to convert to a decimal, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the 5, and I'm going to divide it by 8. I know that 8 cannot go into 5, so it's 0. 0 times 8 is 0. I subtract and I'm left with five. I've run out of numbers, so I had a decimal and I bring it up to the top and I bring a zero after it. I bring down the zero, now I have to figure out how many times can eight go into 50? Well, it goes in six times. Six times eight is 48. I subtract and I'm left with two. I'm gonna bring down another zero. Eight goes into 20, two times. Two times eight is 16. Subtract again. I'm left with four, and I bring down yet another zero. Eight goes into 40. 
five times, five times eight is 40. I subtract and now I'm completed with my uh, division. And so my conversion here is that five eighths is equal to 625 thousandths. And we did that for each of these. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and erase some of my work so I have room to do some more. So I'd do the same thing with five fourths. Five would go inside, the four would go to outside. Four goes into five once, one times four is four, and I subtract and have one. I'm out of numbers, so I add a decimal point. Oh. Sorry, didn't want to put that there. And a zero after the decimal point next to the five, I bring down the zero. Four goes into 10 two times. Two times four is eight. I subtract and have two, bring down another zero. Four goes into 25 times. Five times four is 20. And I subtract. I'm now done with that number. So this time the equivalent is one and 25 hundredths. Okay, so I'd like you to pause the video here and try the next two, then come back to the video and see if you are correct. All right, so check C and D and see how you did. And I just wanna talk a little bit about E. We have the square root of 64 hundredths. So I know that I wanna figure out what number times itself equals 64. And I know that it is eight, but I know that eight times eight is gonna give me 64. So what I'm noticing is I have two decimal places after the decimal. So that means I need the decimal to come right before the 8 for my answer. Because if we multiplied 8 tenths times 8 tenths, 8 times 8 is 64. I have one decimal place here, one here. I'd need to move over two, and then that works.